Hi, everybody. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Rob. And we are the, the Kamaj Inn. Inn. We are located approximately 15 miles north of the frontier town of Talkeetna, Alaska. We are in a small community known as Chase. Sarah and I moved here from Punta Gorda, Florida in 2021. Prior to coming here, I was retired prior to moving here. I had owned a shipwright company down there, detailing boats, working on boats for a number of years. All right, this is what happens with a bad through haul. I started having health issues, having heat strokes, things like that. So Sarah and I decided to start looking for properties in a cooler climate as a summer getaway. And we looked around most of New England, New York, upstate New York, mm -hmm. Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Washington, and couldn't find anything we really liked. I mean, we even looked in Tennessee where I've got family and we just couldn't find what we liked. Not the right place. It was either too high a price, taxes were too high. A lot of taxes for something that was gonna be a seasonal property. So, I come over to Sarah's one day after work, and Sarah says, you've always wanted to go to Alaska. Let's why don't we, try that. <laughs> why don't we look in Alaska? And I'm like, ow, ow, <laughs> you're twisting my arm, Sarah. It hurts, not. <laughs> and I said, okay, find the properties. I so hate. Sarah sat down one day while I was at work, and I come back to her house that evening, and she says, here you go. I had a list what of- What do you like? At least six yeah, there was, that we ended actually, up looking. It was a larger list than that at first. It was a first. big list at first. So she put them all down in front of me, and I said, I like this, 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 and this. And I said, now we gotta find a real estate agent. We tried to find a real estate agent. Oh. Most people didn't wanna deal with us because we're from we're out of state. From Florida. And they're like, oh, these are tire kickers. Mm -hmm. And we were online on, on Facebook and we come across this one group and it's wanting to move to Alaska, as I believe the page. And in there, somebody else was having the same problem as us. Mm -hmm. So I said, hmm. hmm. And then I scroll through the comments and I see a young real estate agent on there say, give me a call, here's my number. And I said, oh no, I'm calling first. <laughs> of course you did right then. <laughs> and we, we Picked up the phone immediately, and it was actually I think it was at lunchtime when I when I came in that day. I think it because was. we called her, and it wasn't late here, thankfully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People tend to forget about the time difference. Oh, hours. So we talked to her, and she goes, "Well, when are you going to be here?" I said, "Give me ten minutes." And we called. We booked our flights and called her back and said, "We'll be there Saturday." And she's like, "Oh, oh!" <laughs> <laughs> she's like. That's quick. I said, yes, in my experience, if you don't jump on a property, it will vanish. And she goes, smart. So we hopped our flight and we came up. So we hopped our flight and arrived in Anchorage. I think it was actually on a Friday that we landed. We stayed in Anchorage the first night, the first night. drove up to Talkeetna the next night. We all met up at the train depot, mm -hmm. got our tickets and hopped on. and. No, well, it was about half an hour later, yeah. we get off the stop and met the owner. We get up to the property and I could see her beaming and <laughs> the property just felt right. It felt good. We walked around, we checked out all the golf bill, we, we toured it all and Sarah and I just walked around by ourselves just discussing things. And Sarah looked at me and said, Is this a dream or is this a plan, a reality? Yep. And I said to her, I'd like it to be a plan. And she said, okay. <laughs> Let's do it. And so we made an offer. At that point, you know, once we got here, we felt like it was home already. We did not look at any more properties. We drove by a few of them that we had seen. Mm -hmm. And we're like, no, much better, much better. Mm -hmm. so we put our deposit on the property and we said, bye to Alaska temporarily. July 30th or August 1st, we said goodbye to our families and we mm -hmm. packed up everything August into the truck pulled out of and we pulled out of Punta Gorda. When we got to Seattle, we had to get everything prepped for the truck to be loaded onto a ship. Yes. 
we had to get Zeus his shots yep. and get up here. We dropped the truck at the shipyard. It was sent out. Day later, we flew, we flew up to Alaska, and that was a whole mess up there. We're not going to go into that. Um, but then we got here. We rented a small, tiny house and stayed in that for the time it took to close on this property. We arrived in Alaska on August 10th, and we closed on the property on August 31st. So how do we get here? We keep our truck in Talkeetna. Mm -hmm. Part of the year, it is at the train depot. Yes. And part permitted of the year- Permitted parking. Yep, permitted parking. Part of the year, we keep it at some friend's house, nice and secure, where it can be plugged in, to have the block warmed, and yes. to have the battery kept on charge. From there, from Talkeetna, we have to get on the train. If we have anything we have to bring, food, different items like that, we have to load them into totes. Those totes, they lift up with a fork truck and right. stick onto the train. We get on the train. Once we get to our stop, we have to unload the train. Now the conductor will help hand stuff down to us, yes, but it's not their job to lift anything heavy. And we don't want them to, that's our stuff. That's our we'll stuff. do as much as we possibly can. We ask for help here and there just to slide things out to us, or you know, they, they will offer to help, which is nice. We, we love the railroad. Mm -hmm. And then once we get off that train at our stop, we have to load everything onto four wheelers because that's what we had when we first got here. Now we have the Kawasaki Terry X and we drive it back to the house. Now we have two trails here. We have an upper trail and a lower trail. The upper trail is kind of steep yes. and it is like a bluff on one side and a sloped hill on the other side. If you see the video of me going down the hill on a sled, that's just steep hill. <laughs> that's the upper trail. And then the other trail is the lower trail and you've got to go over a couple bridges and then up a not so steep hill. We do not have anybody living within about a three to four mile range of us here. We are really isolated here. Now with the train, we can't bring things like construction material, large furniture, right. things like that up here. So the Alaska Railroad has a service what's called the Tundra Truck. The Tundra Truck is one of a couple of different vehicles. One is like a big flatbed truck that rides on the, I like to call it a high rail system. And it has a derrick on it and it can pick things up and set it onto the ground for you. The other is a, almost like a rollback. It has a bed that'll tilt up slide forward and then set flat on the ground. And that's how we got our side-by-side -side up here. And we have a video on that as well. I'll put a link to that right there. <laughs> that service will deliver any big bulky supplies, plywood, two by fours, two by sixes, roofing material, um, be it shingle, metal. We've had both of our water tanks delivered that way. Um, all the material we use for building the inside of the, the new house. The only other real way to get things up here, aside from hauling it up in the wintertime on a snow machine, which there's no trails to go to town here, is to have it flown in. We have had the helicopter here three times. The first one was within a month of us being here where I brought our little wood stove for this cabin, as well as bringing in the sofa that was in this cabin. And we had an even bigger helicopter here bringing in the cook stove for the main house. What kind of experience do we have off grid? Sarah, I'll let you go with that first. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, long ago lived in a cabin in the woods on a dirt road off a dirt road, but it wasn't really off grid. It was a little remote, but uh, it reminded me, this place reminded me of that place. I've actually been off grid a good portion of my life. I've been living on sailboats for some time, working on sailboats, things like that. I've traveled, been all over the place with them, and I'm not used to being tied to the grid. Right. I'd be out of my sailboats, I'd have nothing but solar panel and a small generator, and I was happy. This kind of lifestyle appealed to me. Here at the property, like I said earlier, we do have a greenhouse. It's roughly 16 by 24. However, it is not enough to sustain us with food for the winter. We need a larger greenhouse or areas to plant on the ground. Unfortunately, there is so much undergrowth here and, and dead trees that are on the ground that we have to clear it 
before we can actually start amending the soil to for usage. So in time, we will have a larger greenhouse. It's just going to take a little bit. We do hunt, we do fish, and we actually have a nice freezer full of fish right now that we dip netted for down in Casilop this past fun. summer. We do forage. We forage a lot of fiddlehead ferns, and we have a video on that. We pick blueberries, rose hips, raspberries, pretty much if it is edible. We do pick it. We could pick it up to sustain us for a long time, but we don't like clearing the ground of everything that's around us. We like to make sure that the animals in the area keep some. And speaking of animals, yes, we have a lot here. We have a large population of black bear. We have a fair number of moose, though they were hiding. Yes. Um, and we have a number of very large grizzly. We also have a lot of small animals, uh, ermine, martens, um, wolverines, wolverines, coyotes, wolves, coyotes, wolves yes. foxes, lynx, uh, otters. Otters. We had an otter. <laughs> we actually had an otter go by In that window yard. right there. <laughs> yeah. And we're up on a hill about a three quarters of a mile away from the water. Away from the water. Yeah. We get our water from the spring for drinking. The spring is about three quarters of a mile away. We do get water from the creek for bathing and cleaning in, and it is heavily filtered. We do have a well pump down in there that pumps it up to the house. In the winter time, we do have to remove that and bring it up to the house because the reeds are solid. Sarah, if you could change anything about up here, what would it be? I love it here, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as that because she's happy. I'm happy. What would you change? Actually, I don't think I would change anything. It's to us, this property is perfect for us. What are your hobbies? I like to um, garden, but not so much growing things as rearranging things that are already there. I love stones. I was a potter for many years. Uh, so in general, I have artistic tastes. I uh, make paper out of natural substances write books and poetry and sculpture. And I, well, everything's changed for me a lot because all her hobbies were home-based. They were. <laughs> My hobbies used to be, I'd sail a lot, I'd fish a lot, though I do fish here, just not as much as I used to. I also, in the past, have enjoyed turning wood and I still turn wood. I like building cabinetry and furniture. So those kinds of things can be done here. How do we have things that you guys have at home? Lights, kitchen sink with water, hot water, things like that. Well, we have solar panels, we have lithium batteries, we have generators. We have designed this house, as well as the systems for the other cabins, to be just like home. Why? Because that's how we wanted it. Everybody thinks that off-grid means no power, no water, no internet, no electronics, no phones. Basically, it comes down to tied to public utilities. Water, electric, sewer, internet, phone, things like that are something you choose to have. A lot of towns, you have to be tied to the grid. You have to have electric. You have to have water and sewer. Not here. That's why we like it. This is a simpler living where we don't have to deal with that kind of stuff. We would rather have everything a little bit more simple where if something breaks, I can fix it. Or Sarah understands how it is so she can go in and flip a switch, yes. plug in a pump, things like that. Yes, we have 400 and something gallons of water under this house and cisterns. We have hot water heaters. We have pumps that pump the water. We have a shower. We have a toilet, which is composting in both cabins. We do have an outhouse. I'm not using it. Why do I have to? No sense. Um, we do cook with a wood-fired cook stove, and we also heat with that same wood-fired cook stove in this house. We have TV. We don't watch a whole lot of TV, but we do watch it. Usually, we watch YouTube on it. We watch our <laughs> friends. So what do we do for entertainment up here? Well, come here, guys. This is our come entertainment. Here, come here, guys. Here's this. Do we do? Mishka. <laughs> Go see mommy. There's our boy. 
Come here, Snoops. These are our entertainment <laughs> right here. <laughs> this is Mishka, and that's Zeus. Zeus is seven years old. Mishka's going on five months. Like Sarah said, she does like doing art. I do YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I also do a little bit of prospecting. You know, mm -hmm. I go gold panning, things like that. Do I find stuff? Not very much. I'm not trying very hard. I don't find a lot. I just go out there and relax. What are our goals for up here? Some of our goals are to share our life with you. But we want to be able to share our lives with you in a few ways. We want to be able to share via YouTube. And we like to be able to share with people that choose to come up here and experience the off-grid life. How can you do that? Well, get a hold of us and see if we have an opening. Mm -hmm. But the big thing, how we want to share it when people come here is they can either come up here and relax, or if they choose, they can shadow me while I'm doing our projects around the property. And it can be anything from cutting wood to tending the garden to mm -hmm. building a structure. I'm always building something up here. Next is a puppy run. <laughs> that was perfect timing. <laughs> we don't want to give away every little tidbit about us because we want you to stick around and hang out with us. We do lives periodically throughout the month. Last year we did them weekly. This year we're probably going to go bi-weekly and we haven't settled on a date, but the next one is September 28th at 4 p.m., which is on a Saturday. Hopefully you'll be able to join us. If at any time you have questions for us, feel free to drop us an email. Mm -hmm. So you can get a hold of us that way, whether it be for a booking or just for a general question. If you do have questions, feel free to go into the community post and ask the question there, and we'll get back to you on that. Well, with that, we're gonna end this here. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. <laughs>